In this video I will take you through the properties section of the Universal Controller user interface. Universal Controller System properties define the controller system information and performance. These values are set during installation. They can be changed at any time without having to stop the controller. This can be found by clicking on the administration icon and then on properties. As you can see there are many properties 125 in total that can be changed. I will take you through the most relevant and used. So let's start by going through these properties one by one. Administrator email address. System administrator email address or addresses specified as the recipient or recipients for system notifications. Addresses for multiple administrators should be specified in a comma separated list. Banner logo. Name of the banner logo file to use in the Universal Controller user interface page banner instead of the Stone Branch logo, so you can insert your own company logo. Enter the name of the logo file, excluding the path from directory opswise underscore images in the Tomcat directory. Valid logo files will end in extension .png, .jpeg, or .gif. Banner URL. URL of a web resource that you want to, the banner logo to link to. The URL must begin with http colon forward slash forward slash https colon forward slash forward slash or ftp colon forward slash forward slash and contain no spaces. Critical cal path calculations permitted. Specification, true or false, for whether or not a user can use the critical path feature of the controller. If this property is true, the toggle critical path view displays in the workflow monitor toolbar. The calculate critical path field displays in the workflow details. If this property is false, the toggle critical path view does not display in the workflow monitor toolbar. The calculate critical path field also does not display in the workflow details either to view or modify. Custom day strict mode. Specification, true or false, for whether or not a custom day referenced in the complex section of task run criteria for a task in a workflow must belong to the calendar and use at runtime. Data backup purge export path. This is the export path to use instead of the default export path, which is up opswise underscore backups under the Tomcat directory, for data backup and purge operations. Email credentials permitted. Specification, true or false, for whether or not to enable the use of email credentials. Exclude holidays for business days. Specification, true or false, for whether or not the controller will consider a business day on which a holiday falls as a non-business day. If true, holidays that fall on business days are considered non-business days. If false, which is the default, holidays that fall on business days are considered business days. For example, if the default value, false, is used and a job is defined to run on business days, the job will run on Christmas day even though it is a holiday. This behavior applies to triggers, task run criteria, and JavaScript functions that operate on business days, and provides a means to avoid having to specify a restriction or skip criteria for holidays. Export path. This is the path name where exported XML files are written. This could be exported tasks or credentials, for example. All cluster nodes use their own local system default export path. So you should set a value for export path only if the path is writable by all cluster nodes. Expose resolved script. Specification, true or false, for whether or not to generate a script output type, capturing the resolved contents of the script for each task instance run attempt that utilizes a script from the script library. This property only applies to scripts that have been defined with the resolve UAC variables option checked. Any user with the task instance read permission for a specific task instance will be able to view the script output type content for that specific instance. 
To avoid generating unnecessary output, we recommend enabling this property only for debugging purposes. The unresolved script content can always be viewed from scripts. Expose UDM script. For debugging use only. Specify true or false for whether or not the controller prepares a script when it launches a file transfer on a UDM installation. If troubleshooting is necessary, enabling this property allows you to view the script in the output tab on the task instance. LDAP synchronization enabled. Specification true or false for whether or not LDAP synchronization is enabled. This allows you to retain your LDAP settings whilst using or not using LDAP authentication as desired. Next, an important one, the license key. So this is the license key for your installation provided to you by your Universal Controller representative. Here you can take the Universal Controller license key string and copy and paste that into the field and it'll update automatically. Lock account after maximum login attempts. Specify true or false for whether or not to lock a user account if the user has reached the maximum number of successive login attempts that is allowed, as specified by the maximum login attempts property. Whenever the property is enabled, i.e. the value is changed from false to true, the current number of failed login attempts for all users is reset to zero. Resolvable credentials is permitted. Specification true or false, whether or not the use resolvable re credentials is enabled. Retrieve output default number of lines. This specifies the default number for the number of lines field on the retrieve output dialog. Additionally, if the number of lines field is blank, it specifies the limit for the number of lines retrieved when automatic output retrieval is enabled on a task. Retrieve output maximum number of lines. This specifies the number of lines that can be requested when retrieving output. Scheduled report PDF size. Specification, whether it's le letter, legal or A4, for the page size of the report PDF. Strict business service membership read constraints. Specification true or false for whether the controller will enforce explicit read permission for the following record types. Agent, agent cluster, calendar, credential, database connection, email connection, email template, trigger forecasts, SAP connection, SNMP manager, and virtual resource. If the property is false, users have implicit read permission for these record types. If the property is true, users can view these record types only if they're granted read permission explicitly via an appropriate role or permission. Note, for the, those record types above that have a corresponding permission type, when you create a permission, the read operation checkbox will automatically be checked if the property is false. Strict connection execute constraints. Specification true or false for whether a universal controller will enforce execute constraints for connections, database connections, email connections, SAP connections, and SNMP managers during task instance execution. If strict connection execute constraints is false, only read constraints for connections are enforced based on the configuration of the strict business service membership read constraints universal controller system property. If strict connection execute constraints is true, the execution user for any task instance executing with a connection must have execute permission for that connection. Otherwise, the task instance will transition into a start failure status. Strict report create constraints. Specification, true or false, for whether or not to restrict report creation only to users with the ops admin, ops report admin, ops report group, or ops report global role. System identifier. User selected name displayed in the system identifier field on the user taskbar. And finally, URL action parameter enabled. Specification true or false for whether or not to enable the URL action parameter, which lets you automatically perform an action in the user interface.